Dear friends, dear colleagues, I am delighted to send this greeting to everyone attending the fifth European Transgender Council in the beautiful city of Budapest. In recent years, the abbreviation LGBT has become part of the global human rights lexicon. That in itself reflects a swift and fundamental change. There is now far more awareness than there was even four years ago of the discrimination and violence routinely directed at individuals because of their sexual orientation and their gender identity and expression. Transgender people have had to fight especially hard to be heard, to move beyond being a minority within a minority. The T in LGBT should never be silent, just as you as trans activists and allies must never be silent. For there is a great deal to speak up about. Violence perpetrated against trans people, especially trans women, is horrific and widespread. Hundreds are killed every year in attacks. Thousands are injured, and those are just the cases that are reported. Prejudice and ignorance drive discrimination. Few countries have adequate laws to protect people from discrimination on grounds of gender identity. Access to appropriate health services remains an enormous challenge for trans people almost everywhere. And even today, many governments, including 23 in Europe, force people to undergo sterilization to obtain official ID documents that reflect their preferred gender. Without this, many are forced to live on the margins of society, effectively unable to apply for work, housing, and access to basic services. The past few years have seen progress. Several countries have introduced reforms that make it easier for trans people to have their gender legally recognized. Some of the most pioneering countries are not in Europe or North America. For example, Argentina has set a new global standard with its gender identity law. And just last month, India's Supreme Court handed down a historic ruling that affirmed the rights of transgender people in the world's largest democracy. But change takes courage and conviction. It takes effective advocacy and in the long term, effective public education. That is why your work and why meetings such as this one are so important. As High Commissioner for Human Rights, I have always spoken out against violence and discrimination based on sexual orientation and gender identity, and I have yet to come across a government that says it condones violence and discrimination against LGBT people, yet, very few take action to protect people against such violations. In the past three years, we have produced the first official UN report on the issue and a stream of other public information and guidance materials designed to support a more informed debate on these issues at the United Nations and beyond. Last year, my office launched the first UN public information campaign against homophobia and transphobia, free and equal. Our message is loud and clear. Trans and gender variant people are entitled to no more and no less than the same rights as everyone else. We will never accept any form of violence or discrimination based on people's gender identity or gender expression. States should ban discrimination on grounds of gender identity and make it easier for trans people to obtain legal recognition of their gender identity. They should make sure that violence against trans people is properly recorded and investigated, and they should sensitize public officials and educate people. As Nelson Mandela said many times, education is our most powerful weapon against prejudice. 
the theme you have chosen for this council, trans, safe and equal, captures precisely what we are all trying to achieve. The United Nations stands with you. I wish you productive and inspiring discussions in Budapest.